today. You are one of the speakers here today, right? That's correct. Uh, and I've known you're kind of a guru in email marketing. Yeah, I think that's um, that's something our marketing team's created around me. But um, <laughs> I've been in marketing and email marketing for the last 15 years now. So uh, yeah, I've definitely learned a lot. <laughs> Great. I'd like to ask you a few questions uh, to start. How can we use uh, buyer and transactional data to preview with more precision the uh, the behavior of future consumers? So I think it's a <laughs> It's a huge topic, but I think you know what we've learned over the last few years, um, especially in the digital channels, is how important relevance to brands, customers is, and um, you know the sort of days of batch and blast marketing, where a million consumers all receive the same promotion, the same offer, that they're, they're almost gone. And I think you know the effectiveness of being able to serve customers with promotions, which are based on needs that they've shown before, products that they've purchased before, and then serving them up with new content, which is relevant to those needs, um, delivers far more effective marketing. And I think especially in the digital channels, where all of those behaviors can be measured, um, you know, so whether you're in the social channel or the email channel, but you know, the vendors can see whether the way your customers are engaging with your email program is positive, they like what you're doing, or it's negative, they're actually saying, you know, that wasn't really what I wanted, um, and it's measurable in real time. So, you know, being able to use that transactional data saying, hey, you know, these are the products I purchased in the past, these are the needs and interests which I've demonstrated, and then being able to build, you know, customized and tailored one-to-one -one marketing messages around that creates a more effective um, marketing program, which especially in our space where you've got mailbox providers like Gmail and Hotmail who really want to see positive interactions from your customers, um, it's going to make you look like a great sender and then it becomes easier delivering your marketing message to those platforms because in their mind, your customers are happy, they're demonstrating all of these positive behaviors, they're opening their marketing messages, they're interacting with them, they're purchasing. Um, so you're obviously a you know, you're clearly a good brand in their eyes. And when we talk about tendencies, uh, how can email data, uh, how can we use them to be like the next BI business intelligence tool to preview tendency and using that to better target and find out competitive intelligence that will impact the the business as a whole, not only an email channel. I think there's. There's a few different thoughts around that. I think, um, you know, we have a, a competitor intelligence solution which we use to answer some of those questions. And it's really, really interesting that you can use it to say, all right, we've, we've got a customer of this brand, but what other brands are they customers of as well? And you, know, you can start to build up this this profile of them that says, okay, we can see that they are signed up to a lot of uh, social brands, for example. We can see that they interact with a lot of travel providers. So clearly this marketing audience likes to travel, but they're also signed up with a lot of daily deals vendors. So clearly they're a little bit price sensitive too. So that you can pull all of this together and say, okay, this gives us like a really clear picture of you know the needs and interests of this marketing audience as a whole, which can then be sort of played back into your marketing messaging, the offers that you're providing, and so on. But I think, um, you know, we're also seeing some really interesting um, developments in terms of machine learning and artificial intelligence um, in the marketing space, and particularly in the digital marketing space, and some very interesting applications. You know, the, you, th you think about a science like eye tracking, where you want to know how your consumers are, are, are reading and interacting with your message. And traditionally that had to be a very manual process where your copy was put in front of a group of real people and their eyes were literally tracked, what are they looking at? And you're now seeing machine learning um, solutions which can accurately recreate that without human involvement. Um, you're even seeing some really smart solutions which are helping marketers figure out the perfect tone of voice to speak to their customers in and that's important because customers expect that a brand will speak to them in a certain way you know I expect my brand my my bank 
to speak to me in a very formal way. You know, they, they must go, dear Mr. Hansen, we thought you might be interested in this. But my local pizza restaurant can be less formal. You know, it can be, hey guy, how you doing? Yeah. Um, but understanding what that correct tone of voice is has a huge impact on the success of your marketing communications. And, uh, you know, that's, we're starting to see that as another very interesting application for machine learning and AI now. And I think, you know, smart marketers will be starting to leverage those kind of technologies to improve the performance of their campaigns. It's very interesting that you mentioned uh, AI and uh, machine learning because here in Brazil, we're experiencing, we actually think it's getting too long together. And I'd like to know if in the US, you already have this kind of tools being really used by marketeers and how is it being used? Like you said, is it really something about the future or is something about uh, the current uh, planning of the mar digital marketing? So I certainly don't think that, you know, Brazil as a market has to feel that it's, you know, substantially behind the US or Europe. I think, um, especially when it comes to machine learning and AI, there's probably two different aspects to the conversation. The one is brands doing it themselves. And, you know, there, you've actually probably still got to be one of the really, really big brands with loads of data. So you're thinking perhaps your Amazons, your Ebays, your Netflix. Because actually, you know, if you're going to run a machine learning and AI program, you've got to have so much data to make it work. Um, and not every brand is in that position yet. Um, but I think the other way to sort of adopt that, as we say, is that there's some very smart, um, you know, third party solutions coming to the market, which smaller brands who maybe don't have the resource and the capital expenditure to do it in the way that an eBay or an Amazon can, they can at least start pulling some of those third party tools into their marketing program and benefit from some of the developments in AI and machine learning, you know, without having to sort of build it all in house. And I think um, you know, that's definitely the route that smart marketers will be taking. But one way or another, marketing and technology is going to look, they're going to uh, work together gonna from converge, now on. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, we even joke about it. I think um, one of the things we're particularly interested in um, is the Internet of Things and the fact that devices like your fridge and your kettle yep. now have smart capabilities. And, you know, you're already at a stage where your fridge can basically take an automatic inventory of what's in it and it produces a shopping list for you and says, yeah. right, these are the things you need to get. Um, the one point of interest for us, particularly in the email sector, is actually looking that you know, because these are devices with an IP address, they can also be hacked. And, um, you know, in exactly the same way that hackers take control of people's personal computers and send spam from them, we're starting to see exactly that happening from these devices like fridges and kettles. So, you know, you watch out. The next time you receive a spam email, it could be coming from your fridge. <laughs> it's going to be funny to see that, right? Absolutely. It's going to be something like out of the Terminator. <laughs> Guy, thank you very much for this interview. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. No problem. Thank you for being to Brazil. Lovely to be here.